Uh, so my name is Emmanuel Charny. Uh, I am French, and you know that French are very well known for, our, for having a very strong French accent and bad keywords layout. Um, I started to work on the project in 2005. The project has been incubated at Apache in 2004 and has been initiated by Alex Karasulu in 2003. So it's uh, almost 16 years uh, it has been started, which is quite a long period of time. Actually, pretty much half of my working time and one quarter of my <laughs> living time. I've been project chairman to, for two years, between 2007 and 2009. Uh, I'm not anymore because we have a strong uh, chair rotation uh, policy. We change the chairman every two years uh, because we think that chairman is mainly people with, uh, to deal with paperwork and so on. So it's good to have a new one every two years so that they understand how it works. There is no pride to be a chairman, more burden. Anyway, uh, I'm also a part of the of the MINA project, which is a NIO uh, framework, uh, PMC's project management committee. And uh, I've also been mentor of some other uh, Apache projects like Shiro, Syncopy, NetBeans, and a few others. That's uh, something interesting. You help other people that bring the project to Apache to understand the, what we call the Apache way, which is quite complex. And I'm a father uh, of a young, you know, uh, Constance, with a uh, liking a lot of, you know, satanic m music. <laughs> she, looks, she loves Blondie, and uh, I, I mean, as a father, it's a great reward. So, a bit of history about the project to, to begin with. So, it started in 2003 by Alex Karasulu, who wanted to, to work for the next 10 years on the crippled, most complex, most boring technology that would last for 20 years at least. Remember, 2003 was quite a depressed economy and he didn't want to find a job. Uh, uh, so he just decided to start a new, a new LDAP server from scratch and in Java specifically. It has been promoted to a top level project in Apache which is a kind of uh, achievement. Uh, because suddenly you can expose a project to the world and this is where problem come up, uh, begins. Uh, since then we have had 58 committers uh, and 19 project management, oh, PMC, let's say members. Uh, that does not mean 58 people uh, have been active all the time. Uh, actually it's, it's start coming and, and vanishing. It's not a big deal. Uh, that's about 40,000 commits, so it's quite a big project with one million line of code, all the projects um, counted. And we have seven projects. This is what I'm going to talk about. And we cut a release, 10 releases a year, more or less, across all those projects. It has slowed down a bit in the last few years, but anyway. And we have had one spin-off, which is Mina. Mina was part of the directory project 15 years ago, and it was uh, good enough as a, its own top-level project, so it, uh, it, it has been promoted to its own TLP project. So uh, I will show you the a timeline of all the release since 2005, but I will do it quickly. So that was the first year we had the first uh, release of Apache DS 08. That was much more an experiment than anything else. I mean, nobody, even me, I can't use it anymore. I, I tried to, to, uh, to install it on the server and never had it working. Probably because it requires Java, Java, Java 4. But anyway, that's, that's the first version. The first 1.0. Uh, was cut in October 2006 during the Apache conference. That was an interesting achievement too. Uh, then we added a new project that has been developed in parallel by two people. One was one of my interns uh, at university and uh, another one was working in Germany on something very similar. That was funny because we didn't know about each other and we discovered when we announced the first version of uh, the tool that Stefan, Simon, who is in Germany, was working on pretty much the same thing. So we had the two guys 
uh, working together to, de to deliver studio. And we'll talk about studio a bit later. So now we have two lines of project um, to deal with. Uh, it keeps going for one year and another year. So that's 2009. Uh, we, at this point, started to work on a new version of Java, Java 5, and created 1.5 uh, version. Uh, it started in 2008. Uh, that, that was a bit crazy to have a 1.5 when 2.0 would have been natural, but anyway. And then 2.10, and the new novelty in 2.10, uh, it's uh, LDAP API effort. We started it with Ludovic Fuatu. Uh, uh, I don't see him. I, he, has a, he has a memory leak, I understand. <laughs> Um, the idea was to replace GNDI, was very cumbersome, and the idea also was to involve uh, the Sun guys into the project. Um, sadly, they had some political issues at Sun, so they decided to develop their own uh, API. But does that matter? We, we, we kept going, and 2011 was a year where we had uh, many um, LDAP API release. Uh, concurrently, we started also a 2.0 version of Apache DS, which actually was um, an incremental version of 1.5. We just renamed the 1.5 version to 2.0. And it's our milestone right now. 2.12, uh, we kept going with exactly the same thing. Studio, uh, LDAP API, Apache DS, and we started using LDAP API in Apache DS. Uh, we wonder why we use uh, an API, API in the server, because it's a server, but actually to deal with replication, we have to connect to another LDAP server and we use the API. Plus, we have added some tooling to do tests in, in Apache DS, and test means we need a client, and the client is using the LDAP API. Studio started also to use the uh, LDAP API in 2.0. Then, another year, and another project appeared, which is Mavibot. Mavibot, it's uh, interesting. I'm, I'm going to talk about it. It's a replacement for the database backend that we are using. I, I talk to it a bit more later on. And so on, and so on, and we arrive in 2015. And luckily enough, we had the joy to welcome a Fortress project uh, developed by Sean. Uh, and we uh, teach him the Apache way, and he has suffered a lot, I cannot understand. And another project also is Kirby. Kirby is a Kerberos, a standalone Kerberos implementation. Actually, Apache DS has also an, a Kerberos implementation, but it's not standalone. Uh, Kirby is standalone, which might have some, some uh, value in some use cases. And we keep going, and we keep going, and we keep going, and we keep going. And this is the end. We are in 2019. Uh, I expect to have a 2010 next year. What we can see here is that we have more and more projects and less and less release. The reason is that we have reached some maturity in some of the projects. That's true for Fortress. That's true for the LDAP API. And also, uh, on Apache DS, uh, the project is more and more complex, and it's more and more difficult to cut a release. Studio is more about dealing with the release of Ap Apache DS and LDAP API than adding new features, but uh, still we are. And, and you can see that we, we add just one version per year for this project. OK, let's talk specifically about uh, each of the, the projects. So we start with Apache DS. That was the root of everything. Uh, it's developed in Java. That was possible with Java 4 because Java 4 uh, included uh, NIO. And NIO uh, allows you to have uh, asynchronous uh, connection sockets. <coughs> Otherwise, that would have meant that for each connection, we, have, we would have had to create a new socket and a new thread, which was a nightmare back in, in 2005. We have cut 50 releases <coughs> since then, quite, quite a long number of I mean, releases, four, year, four releases a year, most, uh, most, mostly. The last two years, it's only, was only one release. It's a full LDAP server with a Kerberos server included. Uh, that allows you, to, I mean, LDAP was used uh, as a backend for, for Kerberos. 
it uses uh, Apache Mina, and the current version is 2.0.am25. The AM is just a trick to uh, uh, properly work with OSGI. OSGI is, you know, uh, counting uh, the last uh, bit uh, alphabet in alphabetic order. So M is, af is before uh, uh, release candidate, but it's after GA. Uh, it's Sorry, if we want to cut a uh, GA, uh, uh, that would not fit well with, with OSGI with uh, M M25. Technical question, I won't talk about it too much. And at, as of now, we are requiring Java 8. Java 8 is going to be end of line very quickly. We know that it runs with Java 11. Uh, we have some uh, Jenkins server uh, configured to run Apache DS with Java 11, but still, you can use OpenGDK, and OpenGDK is maintaining Java 8, so it's okay. Uh, what we need to do in Apache DS, uh, and it's kind of urgent, is to use Mavibot, so in, in uh, inner project, uh, to stabilize the database. The database we are using is probably buggy. Uh, up to a point, you get some frequent uh, corruptions. Uh, OpenADAP went through the same issue with uh, BDB, and they decided to develop LMDB. Uh, I will talk about it uh, a bit later. Uh, we need to improve the installer. We are very thankful to Apple to have uh, improved their security policy. Now you have to sign the software when you want to install your, comp your package on, on, a, on a Mac. Uh, of course, I mean, it's, that means you have to uh, sign yourself uh, on Apple, etc. It's, uh, it's a nightmare. And same thing uh, on Windows. On Windows, because we are using uh, an open source software which is limited, uh, we can't have a, a 64 bytes, uh, a 64 bits uh, installer. So currently, the only installer we have on Windows, if you don't install it by yourself, is uh, 32 bits. So the performance are not very good. So we have to fix that. We are going to use probably a new uh, installer package. Uh, this is investigator right now. Password policy works, but it needs some love. There are some you think that has to be to be fixed. Uh, when I write that replication is weak, it's uh, understatement or overstatement, I would say. Um, it's working if you don't do anything complicated. So uh, it's more a proof of concept than anything else. It's using the exact same protocol that OpenLDAP based on the RFC, uh, except that we haven't gone through all the pain uh, all the customers uh, uh, that have used uh, OpenLDAP went through. So we know that we have to, to work a lot to get it working properly. ACL is another burden for Apache DS. Um, our ACL system is based on X500 ACL. It's totally overkilling. Uh, even myself, I don't know how to configure ACLs in Apache DS. I have to read the samples I have written 10 years ago, and it's a pain in the ass to have it working. We are thinking about re replacing ACL with Fortress. It's uh, just maybe an idea, maybe it's stupid. I don't know, we have to investigate. And um, one of the big stuff we added at the very beginning in Apache DS is the, fact the possibility to, to have some store procedures. Stop process is just a, a snippet of Java code that can do something like when, when you add some new entry. Uh, typically, you can send an, um, a message to uh, another server, um, a mail, or whatever. Or you can even imagine uh, implementing some uh, member of features using uh, stop procedures. Like typically, if you delete an entry, uh, a user from, from a server, then automatically it can uh, remove it from the member of without having to, to deal with internal sync. That, that was just an idea. It worked 10 years ago. Then we moved to the new API and it stopped working. So we have to revive it. I don't know if it's so interesting. It was a good concept anyway. So, uh, most of you haven't probably used Apache DS. Uh, 
Apache Direct to Studio is the Elder Brother. Uh, have you ever used Apache Direct to Studio? Who have used it? Oh, okay, thanks. So you know about it. So I know, I guess it's a great tool. And uh, we are pretty proud of, of it. I'm not working, uh, I've, I've not worked a lot on, on the project itself. It was much more about Stefan Sigman and uh, Pierre, uh, Pierre Arnaud Marcelo. Uh, but it's a very good entry point for, for, the, for the project. Um, it's an LDAP browser with schema management. Uh, it's also, it contains uh, Apache directory server, so you can play with uh, LDAP server very quickly. I'm going to demonstrate it if uh, you want. It's based on Eclipse, and uh, at some point it's good because the Eclipse ecosystem is big. The problem is that now Eclipse releases a new version every six months or every three months, so you have to cut a new release uh, that works with Eclipse every three months. So that's something we, we have to take care of. Uh, we just removed GNDI from the equation. Uh, before uh, this year, uh, Studio was using either GNDI or LDAP API. That was a policy because we were not sure that LDAP API was stable enough. And we were lucky to do that because sometimes some users told us, OK, uh, it's not working. You are using LDAP API? Yes. OK, just switch to GNDI. Oh, it works. That's fine. That was a, a correct you know, pass from one version to the other, from GNDI to LDAP API. Uh, it was working with GNDI, and uh, now we know that LDAP API is stable enough and we can get rid of GNDI completely. That removes a lot of code and a clumsy pieces of, of, of code that we don't like. The conversion is 2.0.0-N14. That means we still not have uh, reach uh, um, release candidate status, but that does not mean anything in Apache. Uh, and this is probably something we have to change at some point. Uh, what we consider a milestone is just a feature addition, but the server or, or studio or any piece of software we deliver is considered stable enough to be used, even if it's a milestone. And we have many extending, oper uh, extending um, Pending extension that have not been yet uh, exposed because we don't consider they are good enough to be used. And typically, the Open Adapt Configurator, uh, which works more or less, uh, has been added uh, in the project five or six years ago. But there are so many, many missing pieces that we can't just tell, OK, you can use it. Uh, you have to understand that configuring Open Adapt is quite a piece of work especially when it comes to the ACLs and repetition, of course. Uh, you have issues like, for instance, if you configure ACL in OpenLDAP, you have to do it in specific order. And that means you, you, you have to, to enforce this order in, uh, in Studio. And it's complicated because it's uh, Java uh, code and, uh, and uh, it takes time to, uh, with Eclipse, it takes time to, um, to develop it properly. I will just quickly show you, um, I don't know if I can switch. Yes. So here is Studio. I just launched it. There is nothing in it right now. What I'm going to do is just, just for the purpose of the demonstration, create a new server. And this will be an Apache uh, DS 2.0 version. So here I just created server. Uh, it's uh, pre-configured with very basic uh, elements. I don't change the ports or whatever. The partition, which is backend, is already created. And I can start it. Oh, sorry. I have a server running already, so let me change it. Okay, it started. Now I will create a connection. And I can use this connection right now upon the server. And let's inject some entry to it. <coughs> uh, 
It's not the fastest ever on Earth, I know. <laughs> oh, <well>, no comment. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's a normal error because the uh, root entry already exists, but I just dismissed it, so it's fine. <laughs> and here you can see that you have all uh, the entries that has been added, and we can fetch it. Okay, this is Apache DS in uh, Studio. You can do exactly the same thing in connecting to many other servers. I have uh, some uh, example of server, but I won't connect to it. You can see you can manage as many servers as you want. It's it's pretty slick. Okay. Uh, let me start the server and I switch to the, to the demo. So I stop it and I stop this one too. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the LDAP API quickly. Um, so as I said, it's a GNDI replacement. It has been the first release has been in 2010. It took quite a bit of time to get a working LDAP API. LDAP is quite a complex uh, protocol. And it, in order to do it properly, you have to be very careful. It's also using MINA, it's schema aware, and that's a good addition uh, compared to GNDI. That means you don't have to, you know, when you are comparing uh, entries, you have to remember that uh, entries might be case insensitive on the server, but not in Java. Here, you can really leverage this thing, com comparing um, user which is uppercase with uh, an entry which is lowercase, it will say it's okay. That's because we are schema aware. And we have many controls and external operations that has been added to the server, to the LDAP API. So you can, inst for instance, uh, have transaction, uh, LDAP transaction, uh, external operation is uh, added. You have uh, many Microsoft uh, controls, etc. You have, we are adding some every year. The current version, we have two versions, 1.0 and 2.0. The 2.0 version is quite recent, it's three years old as far as I remember. It uh, brings a better schema management. What we discovered with some users is that we were very strict with the schema. And if you just connect to, for instance, Active Directory, Active Directory, you know, they are not exactly respectful of their uh, specifications. They are changing a few things. And when it comes to use uh, a browser, LDAP browser to connect to things like Active Directory, you have to accept some bizarre uh, schemas from, uh, from Microsoft. And that's true also for other servers anyway. And this is what has been brought into the zero. Uh, we also have improved a lot the DN handling. Uh, it might sound bizarre, but uh, from a studio point of view, it doesn't make a, a sense. We don't give a shit about performance. From the server point of view, as we are using the EDLAP API in the server, uh, managing distinguish them in a fast way is very critical. This is one of the most costly operations on the server. Uh, we have also uh, done a lot of effort with uh, compliance with the RFC. Typically, the string preparation is quite a complex process, which is defined in a, a big RFCs. Uh, you have six steps when you process an attribute or uh, an entry, and we have to go through these six, six steps. Typically, as bizarre as it sounds, you have some languages where you write from right to left instead of left to right. Arabic, for instance. And this kind of stuff has to be dealt with. And this is what we are doing is in string prepare. We are adding new, new controls, new external operation. And uh, we have totally rewrote uh, uh, the control external operation only to make it easier because it was quite complex. Okay, let's talk about Apache Mavibot now. So uh, the history is quite, is quite funny. Uh, in 2006, uh, uh, I was in uh, Austin, Texas, and we had an Apache conference, and some guys just exposed and showed CouchDB, which was an MVCC uh, database. So it was written in Erlang, so it was not used, but we knew that that was the way to go. The thing is that we never had time to work on that. We, have all, we had other issues. And uh, again, uh, the first time I presented uh, Apache DS, I was very proud to be as fast as OpenLDAP. And the guys from OpenLDAP 
rightly sign me up. You're a jerk. <laughs> that's far from being the uh, true. And I, actually, uh, that was very, very, uh, very slow compared to Open Adapt. So we spent three years, four years fixing the very basic issues in Apache DS before being able to start about implementing Mavibot. So Mavibot is a MVCC uh, database, uh, key value store. And uh, the first version was released in 2013. And concurrently, that was funny because I discovered that um, Howard was working with the same idea at the same time, but I didn't know about it. So I give you a tip, a tick, uh, no, um, a tip. When you start something, always browse the internet to see if somebody else is not working on the same thing. Anyway, uh, the difference is that it's in C and we are having the Java version right here. Currently, it's uh, 1.0.8 version and we still have a lot to do. We have a clumsy free page management. Um, what we do is that we can't with any uh, used page um, until the older transaction uh, is still holding it. So, I mean, if you have some uh, connection uh, keeping a, an open search for hours, then we can have many, many use pages that we can't get rid of. And that means the database is growing and growing and growing. Uh, what has been added recently is a cross B3 transaction. That's very critical for LDAP. That means when you do an add into the server, it touch uh, many B trees, many indexes. So you can't just say, okay, I, I, I commit my transaction every time I commit a B tree, I have added a B tree, because if you have 10 indexes to update, that means you are not acid at all. So you have to wait for the 10 B trees to be updated before committing everything. That was not done in M8, and that means you can have a corrupt database. No, actually, you don't have a corrupt database, you have a corrupt result from your uh, searches because the B trees might be uh, in different states. Uh, we have added a better cache and mm, better performances. A better perform performances is because we have a cross B tree transaction. When you update a distinguished name, you have to update many RDNs. I mean, you have a potentially have a access to update the same B tree many times. Simply by the fact that we uh, wait for the transaction to be committed, means we just update the B3 once. At least we flush the data on this only once. And that saves a lot. Also, you can update uh, the B3 sending, let's say, 100 entries in one, in one shot and commit the 100 updates in one shot. And then the performance is way, way higher. And if you want to do bulk load, for instance, you can save a lot of time. You, know, you slice your bulk load let's say uh, adding uh, 1,000 entry in a, in a bug, then 1,000, and you commit every 1,000, it will be something like 60 times or 70 times faster. Uh, on my computer, I can update up to 135 per millisecond, which is quite fast. Okay, this is a simple test I've done. But you have to understand that if I just commit every time, I just update one B3, uh, it's only three updates per millisecond, okay? Uh, we have to implement uh, better free page uh, management and there is a way to do it without uh, having to wait for the order uh, connection to remove the connection. Um, we are storing the what we call copy page that every time you update a B3 you are just copying pages. So the page that has been copied can be removed under certain conditions. I won't explain it right now, it's complicated, but if you keep a track of the copied page with a version of those pages, you can remove some of uh, the used b b pages uh, in the middle of uh, operations. So Fortress is one of the added projects, and uh, Sean explained how it works, so I won't go through it extensively. So it's a back PI, 2 of 15, blah, 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 currently 2.03, and we have to cut a release soon. So it works with Apache DS, with OpenDAP, with many other servers. Uh, Apache DS is used by uh, Fortress mainly for tests. That's a good point of Apache DS. We can uh, launch some tests uh, of the server and uh, of the client. I will show it to you very quickly again. 
So here I have a test, a set of tests, uh, where I, I can define um, a full server here. I name it and then give him a partition and I can create in indexes. This is done in Java. This is valid for uh, all the, the tests we, we have in this set. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tests. They are all using the Apache DS server that is started at the beginning of the test and uh, the server will be shut down at the end of the test. In order for the test to not collide, because you don't know where and when they will be stated, uh, what we have is, is a mechanism by which we register every update. And at the end of the test, even if the test has failed, we roll back the updates by applying the reverse modification. Uh, it's much faster than starting a server for every test. I mean, when I say much faster, it's uh, an order or two order of magn magnitude. So for Fortress, um, we are running the test by using the exact same mechanism, which is quite convenient. Okay, uh, Apache Kerberos arrived in 2015. It's a standalone uh, Kerberos server. Um, it's using the it has a, a Kerberos client API, uh, which is different because we don't have it in uh, LDAP API, and it can be used with various backends when we are depending on our Apache DS backend. Typically, it can use Mavibot, pristine, or it can use in-memory uh, backend, JSON, LDAP, of course, or Hadoop. Uh, it was designed mainly by, by people working on Hadoop, so they are using it uh, as a Kerberos implementation for Hadoop. So, Philippe, we had a, a big, um, What's the name? Edge base uh, implementation as a backend in Apache DS once upon a time, but uh, never went uh, to production. Uh, the last occurrence, the last project, which is not released yet, and I'm not sure we are going to release it anytime soon, is a scheme server, um, scheme implementation. This is the second one. The first one was developed by Kiram, and it was called uh, Eskimo. And uh, the other one uh, just came from a uh, university in America. The guy worked some three or four years on it and they uh, decided that they would make it open source. So they contacted us and said, okay, let's go. And we accepted the project. The problem is that they never have been able to, um, to release everything or to push all the code because they have some illegal issues. The first bunch of code took one year to go through the legal process. And we still have some other parts which are not yet accepted. So it's not our fault. It's from the uni university part. So right now, the SKIMP project is considered as stalled, and we are discussing about just removing, removing it for the server, for the project, sorry. So now, what's next? Because we have something that works, more or less, but we still have some things to do. Uh, as I said, in 2019, we didn't release a lot of things. We have many things to release, and we decided that we have to cut a release of LDAP API and 2.0 version, so no milestone anymore, because it's stable enough, and we are probably going to do it this week. <coughs> then we have to cut a release of Apache DS, and Apache DS is a bit more complex because we have to improve uh, the packaging, and we have a few issues with it, like uh, uh, in password policy. Uh, currently, it's not passing the test on my computer. And a bit of of time. As soon as we have released those two guys, we can release Studio and Fortress. So hopefully, by the end of this year, we might have a full set of those four projects released. Uh, so as I said, I have to work on installers. Installers means some things that works on Apple Pristine. And also a new installer uh, that works on Windows with 64 bytes. We're also thinking about providing a Docker image for all the components. Um, in Jenkins, we are already using Docker because it's more convenient, and that could be a good idea to make it one of the package we release. Uh, we also want to add bulk insert. Right now, when you want to inject one million entries into LDAP server, Apache DS, it takes like two or three hours, which is simply not acceptable. The, the reason is that we just inject 
uh, each entry one by one, it goes through all the process before hitting the database, and then the database is constructed, and then we go through to the next entry, and so on. Uh, the idea is just to build a database first, and it's pretty easy, uh, and then we start a server. Uh, it will be maybe 100 times faster. This is what we have in OpenLDAP already for years. So there is, I mean, we know that it's possible, uh, we just have to do it. Uh, we also have to switch to Mavibot because uh, the, LM, the GDBM uh, database we are using is buggy. Uh, so we have some database corruption and this is really bad for the server. I mean, if you want to use it in production, uh, you better do some backup very frequently. And um, hopefully next year, I, I expect that we will have this maybe but uh, database working. We also have to improve replication, a better ACL system, and we have to fix bugs. As you can see here, we have uh, something like 200 pending or 300 pending pending bugs. Uh, most of them are not necessarily bugs. That can be improvement requirement. Uh, but we have to to clean up, you know, the gap between this guy and this guy. We did some effort two years ago, uh, but one year ago, but there's still a lot to do. It's uh, something that is uh, slowing us a lot. So now let's talk about the, the concern we have with the project. One of the main concerns is the community. Uh, it's a 15 years old project. It's uh, LDAP, and LDAP is technology, technically not very exciting. So it's hard to having the community growing. Uh, currently, I think we have four committers on the projects, Sean, um, Colm, Stefan and me. So that's quite a few for, for the size of the project. The <coughs> second issue is time. I had a, a daughter two years ago, as I said, and it takes a lot of, lot of time. I mean, when I was single, that was fine. I can spend all my time. Then I get married, and then trouble comes, <laughs> right? And uh, trouble is, you know, is this little thing here. Uh, you won't have picture because I don't put picture of my daughter on internet. Uh, I was used to work at 2, 3 a.m. Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, other issue is support. It's an open source project. People don't pay to get some help. So you have to spend a lot of time trying to understand what are the issues they have. First, you have to ask which versions they are using because users never provide any information about the system. They just say, oh, I have a bug, I have an issue. Then you have to understand why it's buggy and it's a complex software. So supporting the project by itself hit most of the time you are spending on the project. Another project, another issue is a style project, Scheme, for instance. If it's not developed, that means you don't have support. If you don't have support, that means user just thinks that the project is dead. So we have to consider when it's time to remove the project from uh, the sub-project to the project. Something else is, and it's not necessarily uh, related to Apache DS, um, the question is the cloud. Do we need something like Apache DS when your application are running in the cloud? Typically in Azure, everybody says, okay, just use Active Directory. It's free. I mean, it's software. You already paid for it. So why do you want to install uh, Apache DS or whatever open it up uh, server? So I don't know. Uh, it's a question mark because I have no answer to these things. But I do think that at point, we have to have this discussion. And it's an LDAP discussion, it's not Apache discussion. And the last point is that, okay, we already have in a niche. LDAP is a niche. We have to realize that it's like DNS. Uh, it's something that will not vanish, but it's not something that is going to be as wide as, uh, let's say, uh, a blockchain or uh, the new stuff, I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, uh, matching learning, whatever. It's a niche. And we are ourselves, Apache EDS, a niche in the niche. I consider the Apache DS right now, it's very good, or at least Apache as a project uh, around directory. Studio is very good and you can use it, no problem. 
Apache DS, it's good if you want to do some tests or if you want to embed an LDAP server into your application. And you have some use case for that. Using it as a production LDAP server, I would ask people considering moving to something like OpenLDAP. Just because I don't have time to help them um, fixing their broken database. When Mavibot will be the standard database, that will be a different thing. So that's a concern I have with the current state of the project. Okay, so if you have any question, I will be pleased to answer. Yeah, try to, to, keep, to keep connected to the reality, actually. I mean, uh, and the reality is even <laughs> crazier than uh, Apache DS. Yes. My question is why are you still spending so much time on Apache DS? Yes? Because, as you said, uh, the server is still not able to be in production. And you have other things like the studio, which is really great, and maybe uh, Kirby, um, on maybe the, the skin project would be uh, more useful for us than the Apache, Apache DS. So, I have two answers to this question. Uh, first, it's interesting. From, uh, as a developer, it's challenging. So, uh, I'm not working on those stuff, you know, to make money. Otherwise, I would be under a bridge for a long time. Um, but it's technically interesting. You have so many aspects to consider, from the network to ASN1, uh, ACLs, whatever, backend, uh, schema, etc. Everything is challenging, and uh, as a developer, I, I find it interesting to work on. So I'm not doing that because I want it to be used by the world. I want, I, I want to offer the best possible uh, solution uh, considering the time I can spend on it. So that's the only deal. Um, the second answer is that uh, every work I do on Apache DS uh, can benefit from all the other projects uh, for many reasons. And I would say that if you want Scheme to be improved, you are just welcomed because it's an open source project. Everybody can join us. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just asking, how can I help? And I will tell you which part has to be improved. But you have to accept the idea that it's going to be a long journey. That's the point. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. So, you're welcome.